us begin. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to CSC 411, Introduction to Artificial Intelligence. Woo! Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> no, I mean, you know, if you've been watching uh, anything uh, over the past summer, uh, AI sort of just... Whoosh, it was already kind of going crazy with ChatGPT for the past two years, but, uh, you know, now it's just deep fakes everywhere on the internet. It's terrifying. Uh, but, um, you know, uh, who here has taken me uh, before? Okay. Keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. Everyone else, make friends with them, right? They, they get who my personality is. They understand kind of my, my vibe, what to expect in my type of classes. Uh, so, again, they're, they're going to be a great resource. Uh, if you don't know who I am, let me introduce myself, because you've heard my name, you've learned to pronounce it today. Uh, so uh, my name is Dr. Adam Guida. You can call me Dr. Guida, Dr. G, Dr. Adam. Yeah, uh, however you see fit. Um, but uh, at least kind of where I sit in the whole concept of computer science is um, back when I was uh, doing my master's degree, I was working on artificial face aging. You know, this was before you could download a Snapchat filter and just automatically made your face uh, look old. The entire idea, you can see that's me when I was your age. The, the hair down was the thing that was the style, not your mullets and whatnot. Um, but, you know, the entire idea is, well, if you think about a 2D graphic, right, and you think about the human face, we kind of all share a lot of the same structure to it, right? Here's just the outline of a face. You all can see this and go, yep, that's a face. And what we can do with that is, all right, well, if it's a 2D image and they're staring at something, right, well, if that's a graphic, I can go in and say, well, let me just put a little dot there because you all took geometry. That's an XY coordinate. And if I get a bunch of those, well, what I can do is I can say, well, what's the average of specifically this point one on every face, right? So again, if I've got tons of people, I can then say, all right, well, if I have a specific image size and I have a bunch of dots in the general area of that, that space, right, I can find the average. And so what we ended up doing with that is we went and said, hey, you know, uh, what if we start to break that down based on different demographics? So your gender, your ethnicity. Um, we also did a little bit of drug use. And the entire idea is, well, hey, now it's not just the average face, but it's the average Caucasian male. It's the average Asian female. It's uh, things like that. And, well, you can also sort of see sort of what's going on over on the edge there. And I said artificial face aging. So what we can end up doing with that is go, not just, you know, what's the average Caucasian male or average uh, Asian females, but we can then say, well, let's put that into buckets. So the 20-year-old group, the 30-year-old group, 40-year-old, 50-year-old, 60-year-old, 70-year-old group. And so I keep this up there because, you know, I'm starting to get, I'm, I'm no longer relevant, right? I'm, I'm no longer hip with the kids. Y'all have TikTok. I think that's a nightmare. Uh, and so at least on my sense, you know, hey, do I, am I going to look like that when I hit 70? You know, I got 30 years to go. So did my research actually, you know, work? That's terrifying. Um, but, uh, you know, while we were doing that, why we were doing that is specifically the two major areas where that is kind of important um, is specifically in high-value targets for the Department of Defense. Someone goes missing for a few decades, right? Well, you need to go find that individual. Uh, there was a, a thing that sort of went by about 10, 15 years ago. It was called a war. Uh, so... We were looking for people. Uh, but the other reason, you know, if you don't like the, 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 the defense aspect of AI, is we are also looking for human trafficking victims. Because, again, they are kidnapped at a, a certain age, and then you may not have them surface over a certain amount of time. Well, what do they look like? Uh, and so, again, that's where kind of this research spawned and kind of worked. Uh, but when I went into, uh, you know, industry, I worked for uh, a smart thermostat company. If you 
are thinking about after you graduate going into startup land, don't, unless you really like cigarettes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh, no, I, I have plenty of advice for you if you kind of are going that route, because uh, it, it is, I learned so much um, in there, but we were again trying to look at uh, fast food chains, and we were saying, hey, you know, um, what's, it's hot, right? We can all agree it's hot today? Good. If you disagree, I'd, weird. Um, but, uh, you know, hey, it's, it's hot. How well is your HVAC unit performing right now? This is a you know moderately you know chilled room for so many people breathing uh, hot air right now. Um, so again, what happens is we measure how much time it takes in that situation. Well, okay, you just turned on the HVAC unit. How much time is it going to take you to get from sort of this peak down to here? If we can measure that again, it's that wonderful uh, little algorithm. Hey, you know, it took an average of this amount of time. We can now use that to kind of train models to say, oh, hey, you know, your unit's underperforming now. You need to do maintenance on the unit. Um, then I, you know, just to speed through this a little bit more, uh, then as I came in to get my PhD, I focused on computer science education. So I really want to make sure you all understand how to do this because it's kind of taking over our lives. Uh, and so I focus on lower level practice activities in our uh, 116 style class and studying like what's the optimal you know, training regimen that we can give a student and do they learn the material? So that's who I am, but you don't care who I am. You care about the class, right? You know, I'm just the person that's uh, covering it. So uh, in that case, you know, hey, all right, uh, we're going to be working off of Moodle. Um, so Wolfware uh, is part of that. Make sure that you're, you're fully com uh, comfortable operating. You're, you're higher level students. You all should know this. Um, however, the one thing I'll just go ahead, I didn't put a slide in there, but I'll jump into it. Uh, so a few things, uh, that grading calculator right there, that's the one I'm using to grade your final grades. Don't don't come at me with any of, like, Moodle says this or that. I, Moodle does weird things when you don't have a grade there. It tries to make estimates and averages and base. No, that's the one I'm working off of. Use that. Uh, if you don't like whatever your grade is, there's your uh, regrade request form. Um, I do have a YouTube channel. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe because I'm going to be finishing, so I'm going to try and record some more videos for AI for y'all. Uh, so there, uh, Panopto, um, the internet and the Wi-Fi is uh, choppy, but I do have a live stream of the lecture as well, so you're welcome to attend that way. You don't have to be in here. You can be in Hunt Library and watch me. I'm perfectly fine with that. Just show up on exam day. Um, so that's all there. The other little thing before I kind of jump into, you know, the rest of the classes, you're going to see that these, I have some consent forms going on here, uh, because if you look at, you know, Moodle, you might notice, hey, course introduction, light mode, course introduction, dark mode, AI or intelligence and AI, light mode, dark mode, oh, next class, I got the same thing. I would like to study you and your preferences of light and dark mode, right? So what did I do? I took the slides. And I, I made them dark mode. So if you like that stuff, cool. Um, but I would ask, please, hey, you know, can I look at your, uh, you know, usage of my my web my my Moodle page, uh, so I can write papers and go, get to go fly out to fancy conferences? You don't have to say yes. You can say no. You can completely ignore it. But you know, please, please, thank you. Um, where, okay, so moving on again. So I've got the YouTube page. Uh, we're going to be working off of Piazza. Uh, so again, if you're very comfortable with Piazza, uh, if you're not, make sure to kind of get familiar with it. Um, there is also an unofficial communications, you know, uh, some of you who's on, and don't actually admit that. Um, I'm going to turn my head. Who here is on the CSC Hub Discord? Okay, put your hands down. Right? Who did anyone tell me? Snitch, snitch. <laughs> right? Some people. Anyways, um, so no core support. I'm on there to make sure you're not cheating. That's it. Right? Go chat, whatever. But I'm. I, I have communicated. I have 
done research on the, the Discord channel. I know the mods. We have chatted multiple times. So they know that, you know, you're not supposed to cheat on there. But, I mean, this is like 100 people are in this classroom. You're not going to know everybody. Wouldn't it be nice if you could get to know people? So there's a place for you to go talk to people and, you know, commiserate. Whatever. Um, office hours are going to be Monday and Wednesdays, 1 uh, to 2 via Zoom. Uh, there's a whole scheduling process on there. Uh, you know, again, the link is on there. Um, but please use that. Um, questions before I... Oh, uh, last little bit there on the textbook. Uh, we're using uh, Artificial Intelligence, a Modern Approach by uh, Russell and Norvig. Third edition's fine. International edition's fine. Um, no, I mean, it's a great book, but the issue is most of our traditional AI algorithms, and we'll get into it on the next slide, most of our algorithms were invented in the 60s, right? So we're dealing with stuff that was invented 80 years ago, right? We knew this stuff already. Now it's just a matter of you learning it and understanding it. Uh, questions before I keep going? Uh, that I think I have to... I, I have requested it, so it's pending. Yeah. Um, but it will, you know, it, it is in request. It will all get squared away. So, uh, other questions? Okay, so like I was saying, again, um, a lot of what we're dealing, dealing with in this class is we're dealing with what is, I call traditional AI. Right, um, it, AI is a big uh, umbrella term when you talk to the public. You, as computer scientists, sort of see these terms, right? You've seen these terms float about, but you didn't really kind of know where the differences were. And so, you know, again, what we think about when we think about the term AI, everyone in the world thinks here. But the problem is you are students. You are here to learn uh, the differences between them. So uh, specifically, when we think about artificial intelligence from a computer science perspective, what we're talking about is like, well, what is intelligence? And can we build a program that can do that? Like, that's it. And then what we are going to be doing again uh, throughout this class is exploring that statement. But we also have machine learning. And that's where, you know, obviously a lot of the, the big hype comes in uh, because that's where we can do clustering algorithms, classification, prediction algorithms, forecasting, all of the, the fun stuff that makes you money. I will not be making you money. Unless you're a game developer, I still will not be making you money. Um, but then we have data science. And essentially, data science is just you, you learn what pandas is for Python, and you become familiar with statistics, right? Because it's math, right? At the end of the day, all three of these are just math and becoming much more familiar with these mathematical equations, or these algorithms that use mathematical equations. Um, again, that's what everyone else thinks AI is. When we start to look at that and break that down from a computer science perspective, that's too much for me to do in a, an intro to AI class. That's one class. Think about that. That's 32 uh, lectures. I could not cover the breadth of knowledge there. Well, we have that spread out, right? I'm going to be teaching you that first little section. I'm going to bring in a little bit of the machine learning stuff because enough students over the years have complained that I, you know, I'm not teaching you AI. Uh, so I do have machine learning things in here, not machine leaning. Uh, imagine there's an R there. Uh, but we also have uh, 422, so you're welcome to go uh, enroll in that after this. Uh, or we've also got the Data Science Academy, and they will teach you data science. So those are your options. If you, you now hate this class, even though you, you've only dealt with me for 15 minutes, right? Those are your options. Uh, so, with that in mind, oh. <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. <laughs> no, go, go, get out of here, go.
deal with that. Deal, deal with life. Um, no, so the breakdown on the grading-wise. Uh, so we're going to have, uh, I'll start with the bottom part, right? So you're going to have two midterms, and you're going to have a final exam. How I've kind of broken this course up is we've got sort of this initial section that is a lot of our still kind of coming out of 316 land, so a lot of graph traversal uh, happening in this first little section and becoming familiar with the different ways we do graph traversal uh, in regards to AI. But then when we get into midterm two, that's much more on what we call the logic section, trying to represent and make the AI understand things. And then finally, comprehensive, that's everything uh, plus the machine learning stuff. Um, the bigger pieces, right, the other half, as you can see, is going to be coming from something called lecture exercises and uh, problem sets. So oh, I'll get there in a second. Uh, I have slides on those. Now that I'm, I'm looking at the order, um, we'll deal with that later. Uh, yeah, so we'll jump into it. Uh, what if you're sick? Stay home. You have given me COVID twice in the past two years. I have a compromised immune system. You will kill me. Stop it. Stay home. You got the sniffle? Stay home. I'm webcasting eventually when I get the, you know, I, you, know you can all just watch me from home and cough at your computer. Don't stop getting me sick. Right? We'll deal with it. Just shoot me an email. Like, I'll figure it. I'll figure it out. Okay? Cool? I'm still going to get COVID, aren't I? Thanks. Uh, yeah, what if I just skip class? Because some of you, hey, I just told you you don't need to come to class. And I've seen the analytics of the people on Panopto. And some of you just don't. You, you, you realize that that's like a free vacation time. Oh, I don't, you know. Well, I'm going to do a little breakdown. So assuming that you're all NC State students, you're taking roughly speaking about 15 credit hours. That's the breakdown of how much it costs uh, to be uh, here this semester. Uh, I'm using the total, but you can fiddle with the tuition and fees if you want. But that essentially is breaking down into about 1000 or uh, just under uh, $2,000 to take uh, a cre one credit hour. Well, this is a three credit hour class, right? So we take that, we multiply by three. That, Roughly speaking, that's how much it costs for you to sit in this class. This is how much you are paying the state of North Carolina to be in this class, unless you got a free ride, at which point you're still paying for the others, right? Roughly speaking, we got 32 uh, classes here. So Every class that you choose to uh, skip, that's $170 that you're paying NC State or the state of North Carolina, uh, and we thank you for your donation. Uh, it does not count. You don't get a tax write-off for that. So, okay, good. I've woken you up. You learned what accounting is. Uh, anyways, moving on. So as we're starting to kind of get back into uh, what the course has to offer, okay, so what is a lecture exercise? You already have a lecture exercise assigned. It is due Monday. Uh, it's not hard, it's that. It's literally, hey, let's assume you have a, an agent who is designed to clean dirty tiles in a two-dimensional graph uh, tile-based world. Here's its pseudocode. You might notice it's nested if statements, and that's it. Right, well, we'll get better um, from this, is, but uh, the entire idea is to let you gain a little bit of understanding, try and uh, kind of wrap your head around the concepts of a simple reflex agent. Again, we'll talk about that on uh, Wednesday. Lecture exercises, you are welcome to complete it as many times as you want. It is an automatic, it's just an automated graded thing. You finish it, you can check your grade immediately to tell whether or not you got it correct or not. Uh, only thing I care about is your highest grade. So if you, you, some of y'all still end up getting 60s on these things, and I don't understand that. You're allowed to keep going, so don't wait. Um, the idea here is that, you know, it's a, it's a check. Hey, we talked about something in class. I showed you how to do something in class. Were you paying attention? Did you ever watch the demonstration, or did you coast, you know, skip through the videos? Um, again, they're going to be due essentially every, not every week. If I assign it, it is due in one week. Right? Again, it's not a difficult thing. Not, you know, and when I say in one week, do literally uh, you know, uh, at 3 p.m. on Mondays, right? unless you know, 
finagling. I'll tell you, you know, if it changes. Problem sets are where the meat of your grades are going to come from, though, right? That's 40%. There's going to be six of these unless I decide to get malicious and make a seventh. Uh, but the entire idea is, well, hey, you know, it's, it's either going to be Java or Prologue. We'll get into Prologue in section two of this uh, course. Um, it's all test-driven based. You get half of the test cases. The other half are hidden, and you won't see them uh, until after you know, the late penalty is uh, done. Um, I've, I'm giving you a template. I'm giving you, like, this is problem set six for y'all. I'm giving you the GUI. I'm giving, like, all that. Your job is to build and control that tiny little uh, icon human right there. Um, <laughs> right? This is your problem set one. It's not due yet. I'm not giving it to you. It'll, that's next week. Uh, but the entire idea is like, hey, you know, here's all the structure I'm going to give you to start. You might notice it, when I give it to you, it's just going to say do nothing, right? Simple reflex agent. You can run it. I said you can run it. Look at that pretty dumb, right? It's hitting the wall. Your job is to clean everything. You got two weeks. Uh, actually, no, I think for this one, it's a one-weeker, um, but that's mostly because this is designed to get you familiar with this platform, because you're going to be using it for this problem set two, problem set three, problem set, fo problem set four, and problem set six. Five is the only one you will not be working off of this, so get comfortable with it. Please don't post it on the internet. Right, you know, it's my code. I, I built the majority of this. You're building the AI. You're building the brain. Uh, where are we now? We'll keep going. Uh, questions on that? Yeah. So, like, we see the results of them and not see like how they're being tested, or like we don't see anything. So the question was about the second half, the hidden test cases. Uh, so how it's going to kind of plan, uh, play, uh, play out um, is at some point, where's problem set two? So at, at the start, again, I'm going to assign it, uh, and then i got to fix the dates. But you'll see, I'll give you some of the visualizations. Where There you are. Blue, blue, right? Uh, so I'll give you like those first five. I do wait until after my late penalty. Again, if you're curious about that, what that late penalty is, maybe read my syllabus that you're you know, supposed to. Um, but after that late penalty is over, I will release uh, all of the test cases so you get to see them all. Uh, that's my way of just making sure you don't brute force the answers. <laughs> Other questions? Okay, uh, so we'll just move into more of the obvious logistics. At this point, your, your academic careers, you should already have well-versed. I know Dr. King gave you the horror story of what we can do uh, when it comes to cheating, right? So don't. Again, you, are, you have seen what AI is now capable of. Someone who wants you to do all the work and they reap the benefits, when you get paid so much money in this world for that. You want them to take credit for your, your creations? Right? You should know better than to just be cheating or like sharing your code by now. Uh, the reality is you're not going to get hired if you're the one cheating. Right? We need you to understand this stuff. Uh, so I like uh, what a lot of the other faculty are doing here. So if you get caught, uh, you get a hundred, uh, minus 100% on the assignment. So not just a zero, it's, that's a penalty, right? And remember, if we're thinking problem set where you, you might like the, you know, you're trying to, uh, right, that's 40%. 40 divided by 6, what is, that's some arbitrary uh, amount of money, but uh, money, uh, uh, points. Uh, but, you know, you get caught, that's definitely a, at least close to a letter grade. Just, and so, you know, you want those high GPAs and all that stuff? Just don't do it. Oh, that thing. 
Can a uh, show of hands left, or sorry, right if you agree with the statement, uh, uh, left if you disagree with the statement? We are capable of detecting our uh, chat GPT generated assignments. So again, agree, disagree. Here's the fun part. I see different. You can put them down. There wasn't a consensus. No one knows. Here's the reality. It's a rat race, right? I detect it, then, you know, it gets, a new update gets released and all that. I don't know. I don't, I, don't, I don't have anything for it. So here's, again, I'm going to go back to this slide. ChatGPT costs, what, three cents? You're paying. Look, if you're using ChatGPT, you are not a smart person uh, because you're also paying $170. So, like, why don't you just, I don't want to say this and be mean. Why don't you just get out of college and just start using ChatGPT? Make your own, like, T-shirt companies and, you know, build your, your... That's what you want is you just want... AI to do all the work for you. Uh, how, this is my, again, this is, I thought uh, long and hard about this over the entire summer. Uh, we're trying to teach you to make this stuff, not use it, right? Yes, prompt engineering's cool and all, but you know, okay, go do a look up on Langchain. There's your Langchain tutorial on the internet. I can give you literally 18 different API hookups to ChatGPT and you're done, right? That's not what you're here for. You, you, you paid good money. To, to learn computer science. So that's, sorry, my soapbox. I don't want to you know, ramble on about that kind of stuff, but that's, that's my viewpoint on it. I'm not going to try and police this stuff. I'm not going to try and reverse engineer and you know, scan everything you've done because you know, what if you just start from the beginning and do that the entire semester, right? Uh, so that's my view on it. Take it or leave it. Cool? Cool. Some of you are like, oh, this is going to be an easy A all of a sudden. Okay, well, got to go back to the rest of this stuff. That's why you have 50% on here, right? You are going to physically have to write stuff uh, with your hand and a pencil. Uh, and that's why I'm doing it, right? The, at this point in your careers, you should be competent coders is how I'm kind of looking at it. So um, take that however you want. But, okay. Okay. Uh, however, okay, I, uh, doom and gloom, my goodness. I, you all hear that I'm a great and, you know, fun instructor, and here I am just, like, dooming all of us. Uh, here's how I kind of view, again, this entire thing. I do want you to help each other. I don't want you to give each other your code. So how I kind of look at it is you finish problem set, whatever, right? You're done with it. You know you're going to get the A. You've passed every one of your test cases. You're, you know, you're, you're competent. You're, you're confident that you're, you're, you, know, you understood it and you implemented it and cool. Obviously, don't give your code to anyone. But if you have friends in the class and they're like, I don't understand what's going on, you're allowed to look at their code. I know, terrifying, right? Oh, I saw the, the head quirks of like, yeah, yeah, you're allowed to look at each other's code. You're allowed to, you know, help them debug it. Obviously, don't tell them, you know, oh, don't find all your, your fancy ways of, like, this is what I wrote, so I'm going to explain that to you. No, help them debug, right? You know, be, uh, try and help them understand these things. I have understood this thing uh, called artificial intelligence for, what, 20 years now? I know it. I get it, right? Some of you may just be getting it. Oh, well, you might be able to give a better analogy. My references are starting to become outdated. None of you understand who a Power Ranger is, right? No, you don't. No, you don't. You don't understand why the Green Ranger is popular or why the right white ranger, because that was my childhood, right? That was already outdated. They were riding dinosaurs and being police cars and stuff like that, right? So my analogies are starting to fade, you may be able to give a better uh, analysis or, or statement. So again, just I'm, I'm more than happy for you all to, to uh, uh, work with each other or help each other out, right? Again, this is a hard topic. Everyone wants to now understand and learn AI. Yes? Only after, because we just didn't work together, does 
that only after you? Yeah, so after, after specifically. Like, you are done, you get it. You, you, you've, whatever in your brain is like, I understand this topic now. And I have demonstrated I understand it. That's kind of what I'm getting at. Those are your things like, other questions on this policy? I know it's. Okay, well, I'm not going to give you, uh, let you go away quite yet. That was the first half. Uh, what I kind of want to do with the rest of my time, uh, since I got 45 minutes, is, you know, spend this time giving you kind of a, a, a peek into that concept, right? This is artificial intelligence. Okay, well, this is now a question for y'all. I'm going to erase this and let you stew for a second. What's intelligence? Having the ability to learn. Okay. Ability to learn. Is that readable in the back? Okay, I tried my best. Um, so, ability to learn, okay. Anyone say that, you know, that's not enough? Just being able to learn something is, uh, means you're intelligent? My dog, well, I don't have a dog. My, my imaginary dog can learn stuff. Oh, well, you know. One more. Reason, reason. Okay, all right. Now, everyone agree that these are things that you think an intelligent person? Now, if we only looked at that list, do you think that those are the only things? No, right? And well, okay, well, fair enough. So this comes from, I mean, this is dated. This is now 30 years ago. Uh, but the definition that uh, mainstream science on intelligence said was, all right, the ability to reason, plan, solve problems, think abstractly. I don't see that going on there. Uh, comprehend complex ideas. We don't have uh, learn quickly, learn from experience. Okay. Who likes this definition? Yeah? Good, because psychologists don't. <laughs> Right. Yeah. So, I mean, again, we got to think you got to play this kind of understanding that, you know, we don't we're, we're still trying to understand how we work. Right. Carl Jung and uh, all the other people who've kind of come and modern you know, cognitive science is still something very new uh, to us as a species. Um, and so, again, we looked at this and, you know, less than half of the researchers that were surveyed, dis, uh, only 40% only could agree that this was enough, this was sufficient. Some pe so professionals in the career still don't quite understand what it means to be intelligent. And so y'all, you're not cognitive psychologists. Maybe some of you have it, are looking into it and minoring. Uh, but like, you're math people, you're coders and computer scientists, right? Problem solvers. And here I am trying to teach you something where you don't e we don't even, as a, 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 a just a, a species, understand fully. Um, and so that's where I like to kind of bring this uh, entire section up, is like, we don't understand intelligence as humans. So what are we making in this class? What are we making when we say AI? Uh, and that's where we got to go all the way back to uh, Charles Spearman, who sort of when we were starting to make these kinds of quests, right? Again, just under a century, or just over a century ago, uh, he kind of described what he calls the G factor, uh, this single solitary variable. If we could take you, your essence, and reduce it down to a single numerical value, uh, that is your general intelligence. Who dislikes that idea? 
Bill, you go. Why? Turn people in. Unfortunately, we are, yeah. I mean, that's, yes. But when we do a comparison between two people, you know, we'll talk about that in a second. You'll, you, you're not going to like the rest of this, but you're not, you're not designed to, or not like in a, you're going to notice that this is not a fun lecture. It's a fun lecture, but not a fun lecture. Oh, awesome! <laughs> but I would take it a step farther and say that it's not, it's not that it's not right to remove people. The suggestion that there is one definition of human intelligence, I think that you will never find one. You will never have it. There is no human intelligence. It's, it's semantics, right? So to run down that rabbit hole forever is pointless. Because it's just like, yes, I like it. So and that's, uh, that was essentially what I was kind of pulling for. So this idea that uh, a lot of people dislike the idea of reducing. So you're right. When I say you're, you boil down to a single solitary number, a lot of us dislike that idea, right? That's, uh, and then what, we're still arguing about what intelligence is. This is sort of that first pursuit. Uh, but here's where we get, in, you know, or we aren't there yet. But you're right. Again, if we look at this from a, a, just a, like a research philosopher discussion perspective, uh, a lot of people dislike this idea that there's a single variable, a single numerical number. Uh, and that's where uh, Thurston came in and was like, well, no, I 100% disagree with that. You're trying to reduce everything down to uh, everything that it means to be intelligent. Uh, and so Thurston kind of broke things down uh, across. He looked at uh, 56 different tests and essentially broke them down and categorized them into seven different categories. Uh, spatial ability, so the idea that you understand that when I do this, it's the same object, right? And you can, funny enough, understanding the rotations is actually a strong indicator for success in computer science. So if you're, start practicing, right? Uh, Verbal comprehension, uh, word fluency, uh, perception speed, so reaction time, numerical ability, your reasoning ability, and general memory, right? Okay, so we're out of that concept of uh, one variable in the idea of, uh, you know, what it means to, you know, what intelligence is, who still does not think this is enough. I will, I will call it, but you're on timeout because you're, thank you, thank you. I like that you're, let me get someone else. I want people that I don't hear from all the time. Emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence, yeah. Music, uh, musical acuity. Uh, so there are a few things that are still not uh, here. Uh, now we get to the fun part. Oh, every time we reproduce studies, it does come back to high correlations of that G factor. That, yeah. Again, I'm just a computer scientist teaching you math. I find this terrifying, but also kind of weird and cool at the same time. Like, every time we try and uh, uh, refute the concept of a single variable, we end up finding strong correlations that it's also evident. Again, math is just our way of trying to represent the world, and so that's just a really interesting kind of Side piece. But okay, fine. All right, you know, we're still arguing. Emotional intelligence and musical acuity, intelli whatever. We still have to keep going, right? Time moves forward. And so that's where we get into Benet and Simone, uh, who essentially, like, oh, we got to go back in history. Again, I think this is um, 1960, maybe, maybe even uh, sooner. I don't remember the official, like, year. But the entire idea was, France mandated uh, public education, right? Every child needs to go through public education uh, in France. Well, here's the issue that they ran into. This idea that, hey, you know, one student may not be, even though they are eight years old, right? They may not be performing at an eight-year-old level, right? Oh, maybe they didn't learn to read uh, in their homes, right? Again, if you, you go from not requiring school to now requiring school, someone may be illiterate. Uh, so at that point, you know, what uh, Benet and Simone are looking at is not really, hey, can we quantify and measure people? We're just trying to figure out who needs help. 
Where, where do we need additional resources when it comes to now giving students uh, or requiring uh, education to all students? So kind of where this approach came up of the IQ test is like, OK, we're going to create something called the mental age. What is your actual age? What is your chronological age, right? OK, fine. You're eight years old. OK, well, how do you perform compared to your peers? Well, if you are performing uh, at a 10-year-old level, right? Again, I'm not trying to say grade level. I'm just saying like 10-year-olds you know, are scoring, and you're scoring like a 10-year-old. OK, then that you know, arbitrary number, we're going to call the mental age. We're going to say you are now, roughly speaking, nine years old. OK. Well, then what do we do? Oh, OK, well, then we, we said, OK, your mental age is nine. Um, well, then uh, Stern came around and said, well, hey, let's take that and let's turn it into uh, something called an intelligent quotient, an intelligence quotient. So this entire idea is now this is where the IQ number comes from. So the entire kind of breakdown of this is, again, we take your mental age. So again, we're looking at that uh, child who is mental age nine. They had the chronological age of eight. Someone do fast math for me. One what? 1.125. One one I'll just add the multiplication there, right? So we multiply that by 100. You get an IQ score of 112.5. Neat, right? OK. That is, that is what the IQ tests is designed for you to do. Who here likes to tout, or had, at one point, liked to tout that they had like 130 IQ? I think you know. Some of my prompting has already taught you that you shouldn't admit a lot of things, because I will. Yeah, because, OK, 130. That just means you, know, you performed higher. right? That's all it was. But oh, let me just move through, because I think, yeah, there's the IQ. Um, but here's where that starts to fall off. OK, I'm talking uh, this age. OK. Let me show you how old I am. I'm old. You see the grays, right? Uh, drink a lot of water, stay indoors, you know, only a moderate amount of you know, lotion and hydration. You know, that, that. And you too can look like me at this age. Uh, but OK, well, if I perform one year higher, or uh, yeah, yeah, let's say my mental age, because I'm already checking out. I'm already starting to look at houses and my retirement plan and Pensions. Sorry, my back just gave out. So, all right, well, if we do the math, the brain don't work no more. I got to do the basics. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. There's my IQ, right? OK, well, first things first. How do we determine what like, performance is at these different ages when you get older? right? What's the difference between a 39-year-old and a 40-year-old, or even a 30-year-old? Let's, you know, again, I, you seem to understand that I'm quite jovial and you know, energetic for my age, and a little surprised. So maybe I'm young at heart. OK, well. You were being taught by someone with a 76 IQ. I mean, you're the one paying 170. Thank you. Uh, no, again, so you know, this is where IQ starts to fail. Uh, yes, again, at some point in your, you're adults now. You're not children. We don't need to decide whether or not you need additional support to perform at your levels. You're, you're grown-ups. And you can see that the math just stops working after some point, right? You, you all start to blend. Uh, the older you get into, you have an intelligence of 100 uh, or slightly, you know, one point higher, one point lower, unless you really start to kind of think about what that mental age 
concept means. And again, that was just a man-made construct that, you know, we're just saying you perform at a certain level compared to everyone else. So this is where we start to get into, you know, the shaky territory of what we call intelligence as humans and even use as quantifiers for it. Uh, and why that matters is because, well, hey, you know, every you've all you all understand, like you've seen newspapers and people, oh, someone with 180 IQ got a doc, got three doctorates or something like that. They're intelligent, right? We all agree that they're intelligent, but the problem is that the IQ number has become uh, something to be. Uh, uh, it has turned into a way to gauge somebody's worth in society. If someone has a lower IQ, uh, what we have seen is that, yeah, you know, if you have a low IQ, Q, Goddard uh, in New York uh, sterilized and segregated 15,000 uh, school children because they just happen to have a lower IQ. Uh, Yerkes used the IQ test to determine who should go to the front line of battle because if they are a smaller number, well, you know, they're not going to be missed or they're not going to be, uh, you know, contributing as much. Uh, and then you've got the entire thing with uh, World War II, uh, the final solution, German doctors. Uh, it started with essentially looking at someone's intelligence. It was a mentally disabled individual. Uh, and essentially they used that as basis for euthanizing that person. Uh, and then that spiral or that, that child and that turned into everything else that we you know, know about World War II. Uh, but this is not your history class. This is not your cog sci class. So I'm going to keep on going into what we are going to talk about in this class. Artificial intelligence. Artificial. I just showed you that we don't understand IQ, or we don't understand like, intelligence. Uh, and we, every number that we've made is kind of arbitrary and doesn't quite work all the time. So. When we look at artificial intelligence, right, is now we kind of break, or your text uh, breaks it down. Again, it's optional. You don't have to buy it. Um, but it breaks things down into four categories. Thinking humanly, thinking rationally, acting humanly, and acting rationally. What those kind of break down to is like when we think thinking humanly, it's how we think, right? I don't know how all of you think, but I've got a music number going on in this thing all the time. Do I just build a computer that has, you know, I'm, Rick Astley is never going to give you up on repeat? Right? You can. Uh, congratulations, you made Dr. Goita. Uh, no. So when we start to think about that, that's also technically you know, just a subsection. This is interesting stuff in the cog size space where they're not looking at it from a, you know, describe what's happening. They're actually looking at it through, you know, physically what's happening. So we are doing brain image, imagery, fMRI scans, to see what parts of your brain are lighting up when we show you pictures of happy children or sad puppies. Um, and so that's where, again, cog sci sort of comes into play. Uh, why I mention this is when we think about, again, those different categories, we are not really in this space as computer scientists. This is cognitive psychology's territory of like thinking about human thought, right? Uh, we can manipulate it and interact with it, but what we end up doing in sort of computer science is we kind of more channel it into what we call acting humanly. So you're all hopefully familiar with the Turing test by now, right? If not, the entire idea is if you can design a computer that fools other people into thinking it's human, is it human, right? Um, you also got things like the uh, uh, Alan Turing's um, Chinese room concept. You know, you're just receiving inputs and outputs, and it's someone who does not understand any of the characters that they are producing, but just hands it to you. This is almost literally what's going on with LLMs right now. Um, is the thing that's just reproducing all this output uh, intelligent or just following orders? Um, and so a way to think about this is, you know, again, I had a lot of time over the summer to think about AI being the instructor of it. Uh, but also, I had one of these. Who gets the text messages now? You know the ones I'm talking about. Unknown number. Just... Hey, 
It was really fun seeing you. Let's catch up next week. I don't know this number. I don't know this person. What do you do? You ignore it. You delete it. You don't respond. How dare you? Because you know what's coming next. It's either a scam or a porn site. However, let's just kind of look at this concept known as Alan. This amorphous uh, name appearing on the top of your screen. You ask it a question, them a question. Hey, can I ask you something? To which they respond, sure. What's up? Right? Okay, fair enough. Are you a GPT? What? No, LOL. Y'all still use LOL? Uh, okay, so I shouldn't replace that with other stuff? Okay, good, good, good. I'm not going to start rattling off. That's later in the semester. Uh, no, but the question is, looking at this dialogue, can you tell me if Alan is a, a human or, I mean, a GPT? No. You know, it's a figment of my imagination. There is no Alan to begin with. But again, right, you don't know. You can't tell from your, 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 your text. Uh, and again, we've seen all the deep fakes that have been coming out over the summer. Right? Video and audio are, are not really helping. Pictures and all that stuff. It's fake now. Everything's fake on the Internet. It's terrifying. Uh, but, okay, fine. Now let's get back to the course, right, instead of me ranting. Uh, so how would I do this? Like, again, let's think about this from a computer science perspective. Let's assume that's a GPT. Alan is fake. What would I need to build that? Okay, well, I would need to have some concept of natural language processing. I would need to be able to sort of take in the fact that I asked a question and it was able to deduce that, hey, that's sort of a general question, right? That's what we get into what we call knowledge representation. Uh, and then from there, it's like, okay, well, you know, then it needs to be able to make some deduction based on that and some response from it. That's not only natural language processing, but again, that's where machine learning has to come in. So this is where we start thinking about it from a, can I just design a, a program, right? I, We'll always seem to talk about it like it's a, a living, breathing thing, you know, AI. But remember, at the end of the day, it's a program. Uh, can we design a program to do this? And how do we design it? Uh, the reason why we kind of present that is, again, you know, this is dated uh, in, in modern times. And that's terrifying, consider it's only like three years old. Uh, but this is that news article. This is the transcript of that news article when Google... Uh, had an engine, they fired an engineer who was like, oh, uh, you know, the chat bot that they were working off of, Lambda, has become sentient, right? Well, the problem is, you know, again, some of you may uh, uh, have some familiarities now uh, kind of going on, right? This is my, this is our current kind of best way of gauging, you know, if something is a GPT content, right? It, it, from a prompt, and you're not prompt engineering to transform, you know, make it start writing poetry, right? What is the nature of your consciousness slash sentience? Okay, fine, right? That's a, a human typing out that. This is that element, I think, that helps us, you know, see the uncanny valley. The nature of my consciousness intelligence. I don't even want to go into the rest. Right there. Almost word for word. The only difference is your and the my. And we're actually going to see that that's a very common thing in natural language processing when we get to that section. So, you know, these little details. Uh, so the way I want you to think about it is like, well, was AI's, uh, Google's AI sentient? You know, some of you may think that or think it's possible, you know, in AGI's uh, around the corner. Some of you may just be like, no, it, no, you know, you completely disagree with that statement. And you're like, it is just a program and knows what to say at the right times. To wit, I make my nice little fun. <laughs> is that how some humans are? You know, when you call a, a, a toll-free number and you're just asking for a representative and you hear the representative, they go through a script. And, you know, they listen to what you say, and then they find what script to say in response. So, you know, humans kind of do that same thing. So is that sentience or not? Uh, but moving on, right? Again, now we got into this idea, okay, fine, that was acting like a human. But no, let's, okay, we got that big glaring word, and that's not really, you know, 
reasoning. You know, that wasn't acting like a human isn't telling us to reason. That's where we get into this idea of thinking rationally. And this is the second section. And so again, we're in section one. When we get to section two, we'll start kind of exploring this concept of what it means to think rationally, but we get into essentially logic a little bit and programming logic. Uh, so if we were to kind of look at those facts, right, uh, of our world. So I am a professor. We, we all can agree that this is a true statement. Don't, don't give me that look. <laughs> What's your name? What? Braden. Braden? All right, Braden. All right. You got to stay there the rest of the semester so I remember. <laughs> Uh, no, so, okay, we can all agree, all right, well, there exists some thing in the universe that we're going to name Adam, and that this thing in the universe has some sort of feature or attribute known as professor, right, and that, we'll get into this later in the semester, but okay, well, that thing has what we would call a function. Uh, okay, well, then we can also deduce some other types of things, or not deduce, but uh, we can uh, apply different types of facts, maybe a cause and effect style uh, fact. For example, professors are cruel. Who agrees with that statement? I don't know why I'm staring at you. I just need a face to look at. Okay, all right. None of you agree with that statement? No professor you've ever dealt with has been just like a me. Oh, I saw that. <laughs> okay, fine, boom. Professors are cruel. So we take that idea of that function and say, well, we don't care who is a professor, but the, the idea of a professor uh, can then imply that that thing is also cruel. And now that we have these two rules, we can make reasoning. Based on the rules that I have given you, in only these rules, what are we capable of deducing? What's your name? Joey. Jo All right, Joey. <laughs> you got to sit right there the entire time so I remember. No, yeah, we can deduce, hey, you know, well, Adam is a professor and professors are cruel. That must mean that Adam is cruel. Uh, I know, right? I not. Nah. Um, but here's where the problem with that will come in. And again, this is stuff we'll talk about when we get into knowledge representation is, well, what, what is correct knowledge, right? How do we, how do we build these rules, uh, again, in a program to make sure that they act accordingly? Uh, and you'll have to deal with that. Uh, this is where I kind of make it a little goofy uh, to kind of lighten the mood. Um, but okay, well, let's ar arbitrarily think about like a sandwich. What's it mean to be a sandwich? Okay, well, again, we will talk about all these different, you know, the syntax going on here, but we could say that a thing would be, would have this kind of, this feature or this function known as sandwich that would imply that there's something that needs to be bred, something that, something completely different that needs to be bred, something is a filling, because different sandwiches have different fillings going on there, uh, and that that thing that is a filling is in between our two things that are bred. Okay, right? We all hopefully are agreeing so far. So grilled cheese works. We all agree a grilled cheese is a sandwich. Good. What about a grilled mac and cheese? Oh, yeah, carb nightmare. I bet it tastes so good. What's the sauce? Well, okay, but here's the problem. I said in between. Meatball sub. Sandwich. I see. Sure, okay, so, well, well our rules, this is, again, why, you know, logic kind of it gets a little tricky because I have to modify my ruling. Oh, because I can't say two slices of bread. I have to say a bread container suddenly uh, with the filling in between. At which point, well, we already agree that a meatball sub was a sandwich. A hot dog a sandwich. Good, good. You all agree? Uh, so this is just... Uh, <laughs> If you haven't seen this meme on the internet, uh, but I, I see where I am on time, so uh, there you go. Uh, this is more important. Uh, so this is, uh, uh, if you have not gone to the cube rule, uh, show your friends and they will be like, you are so funny uh, because this is fun. So if we're looking at this, this has been shown uh, a few different places. It's been modified over the years, but the entire idea is that, you know, the joke of is a hot dog a sandwich? Here's some more memes. New York says yes, and why I kind of mention this is well, we're joking about it, but they said yes because specifically they're looking to determine whether or not to tax it, 
going on there. Uh, a taco is considered a sandwich as well for the, for the purposes of taxation, right? And ta- again, if we think law, that's where a lot of formal logic is applied. Uh, so yeah, uh, in this case, a hot dog does get classified as a sandwich, uh, at which point people started to uh, joke about these things. As you can see, seven years ago, someone made an argument that Pop-Tarts are now ravioli. Uh, to wit, uh, ravi- uh, Pop-Tarts said that no, ravioli is a Pop-Tart. I hate that this is advertising. Uh, then the sandwich uh, alignment chart that I stole blatantly, uh, and then there's more memes, uh, but that bespoke uh, phosphatide, uh, who talked about this entire idea of the cube rule. Uh, so the cube rule. So let's just look at it from the concept of where the starches are located. So toast, sandwich, you know, two, taco, uh, sushi, bowl, calzones, whatever. Uh, oh, you know, okay, fine, we'll take this. It makes perfect sense if we just look at where we put the starch, right? So if we put the starch at the bottom of the dish, We'll classify that as toast, okay, right? So famous toast, uh, (laughs) sushi, uh, a pizza is now toast. Uh, Pumpkin pie uh, is just bent toast. Fine, well, okay, all right. Uh, uh, We put the starch on the top and the bottom. Uh, So famous sandwiches, uh, Victorian sponge cake, uh, toast that's in between more toast, Uh, quesadilla, very sandwich looking. A uh, taco, right? Again, tacos. Uh, well, obviously the hot dog at this point, but now also uh, the sandwich is also now a taco. Um, and somehow pie is still, uh, uh, it's now, it's toast and taco. Uh, sushi, again, American sushi. We put the rice on the outside. Uh, yeah. Um, so our famous uh, sushi that you can get at Sushi 9, Pigs in a Blanket, um, enchilada and a falafel. Uh, quiche, so just wrapped around with an opening at the top. Uh, well, obviously, cheesecake is uh, quiche. Bread bowls with soup are quiche. Uh, more, a deep dish pista if you're from Chicago. Uh, more pie, more pie. Calzone, uh, just everything is wrapped in there. Uh, so corn dog is, in fact, a calzone. Uh, you can get your corn dogs and your pies, again, uh, at DP Dough uh, Burrito. Um, more calzones, the Pop-Tart, uh, the ravioli, uh, a crustables going on. More cube rolls, no starch. Salad, right? Okay, we can all agree. Uh, steak is my favorite salad. Um, I don't understand the mashed potato one personally. I didn't build the website, but sure. Uh, salad, uh, my other favorite, uh, you know, just a turducken, meat wrapped in meat, wrapped in meat, uh, chocolate, uh, cake, obviously, you know, layers to cake. Uh, so, my favorite cake, uh, the Big Mac. Well, it was my favorite till it got expensive. Lasagna is my favorite cake, really, at this point. Um, nachos, so little tiny amounts of uh, starch. Right. Uh, more nachos. Muffins, uh, they're fine. Uh, rice, you're free to... And this was always the fun little joke at the end of there is that... Uh, uh, some of y'all are going to go and get, you've already put in your order uh, so that it's ready for you at uh, Port City Java. At which point did you order a salad? Did you order, right? What kind of salad did you order? Uh, three bean uh, uh, vanilla soy latte is just a three bean wet salad. Um, again, there's the tacos are a Mexican style. That's from Indiana. That was, uh, the reason why I included this is that's, what, just three months ago? So this ruling just came down. Um, but I got to keep going. Uh, you know, okay, I, I've broken your mind on what it means to make rules in this world. Uh, and so, okay, well, let's just think rationally. All right, let's arbitrarily say that those are the rules that we make. Can we then build a machine that deduces it? And yes, this does look dated because it's, you know, old. Um, but Betty's brain is sort of that con- uh, uh, a great example of what it means to think rationally. Now that we have all those rules, right, you said that Adam is cruel. You were able to make that deduction. How would we get a machine to do the exact same thing? And so you can see, right, uh, there's this entire graph structure, right? You all understand that these are, you know, directed graphs with, you know, the graph having some attribute associated to it and the edges having some sort of, I won't call it a value, an operator going on there, right? Right? two pluses, uh, three pluses, one plus, one minus, 
uh, three minuses. Okay, right? Well, if that's the case, again, it's possible, and we'll explore again how uh, a little bit, but if we were then to ask Betty, hey, you know, if algae large increase, you know, if algae increases to a large amount, uh, so where's our algae? If algae increases to a large amount, what would happen to waste? Okay, well, macroinvertebrates eat algae, so if there's more algae, they'll eat more, and they would produce potentially what? A large increase of waste. That's where we start to think about this idea of thinking rationally comes into play. Uh, and so we'll explore sort of that again in section two of this class. Um, and then we've got acting rationally. And so again, I said, you know, um, thinking humanly, we don't touch. Acting humanly, we will touch a little bit. Uh, thinking uh, humanly, we will, or sorry, thinking rationally, we will do in section two. Th acting rationally, this is where section one of this class sort of sits. This idea of, okay, let's assume we have what we consider a rational agent. And what a rational agent is, is they look at sort of the situation that they are in and somehow make a decision on what the best outcome should be. What should I do? What should the agent do to get to a certain you know, tile, to optimize a configuration, to clean all the tiles on the floor. What should the agent do if it is going to act like a normal, you know, act rationally? Uh, so again, this is where we start thinking, uh, you know, a self-driving car. Self-driving cars just moving around. What would, what the thing should do? Oh no, well, what, what should it do? That's your animation budget, by the way. No, we all know that that's not what, acting rationally should do. It should not be trying to rack up score points and all that stuff. No, a rational agent would not allow for that to occur, right? They would see uh, the individual, and so as the self-driving car uh, continues moving forward, that person still appears. As it gets closer, though, right, it halts, it breaks. It doesn't, it, it should not. Um, reason why this is important, you know, again, is we got to go back in time. You know, again, pre-COVID, I know, seems like a decade ago, but it's only half a decade ago. Um, but, you know, this is where Uber, when they were starting to build out their self-driving cars, uh, guess what? It, you know, it, hit, it collided with an individual, a pedestrian, um, who ended up dying uh, because car decided not to swerve. There wasn't anything in there. So that's, you know, super important, you know, when we think about this from uh, making sure that the software we build, uh, you know, acts rationally. Um, the other little thing here is, you know, with all the stuff that we as, you know, just humans are seeing, you got to remember that there's large entities beyond just companies kind of trying to be aware of what the capabilities of AI are as we move forward. Um, and this is from, you know, again, this is decade, uh, or not decade, but um, this is dated uh, pre-COVID, right before COVID. Uh, but they are, you know, they're trying to understand this stuff as much as you and I are, right? Some of this is, I, we get it, but then we don't get the, the, you know, what's behind the curtain. So they're trying to make that same kind of an analysis and understanding. Um, so when we look at this class, at the end of the day, right, what you will walk out of here with, right, you will, uh, you stick in the round in this class, you pass, uh, you walk out of here and you say, I, I, I took a Dr. G class, I'm, I'm you know. Uh, so what we're going to be talking about is problem solving. Uh, every computer science class at this point is problem solving, but we will be doing the same thing uh, from a different kind of, that term means something different in our world. Uh, search, right, you just who just finished 316, so spring or summer, right? Some of you did, right? You just got over this concept of graph traversal and working through graphs. Well, let's look at some algorithms that are now trying to search through graphs, uh, and how do we do that properly? Uh, then the knowledge and representation, uh, but then we obviously get into the fun part that leads into machine learning, where it's like, okay, now it's not just one Thing. It's not just go to the green square, you know, go to your location. How do you make a sequence of choices? How do you make 
multiple actions? How do you plan that out? And then what do you do when you don't know everything about the world, right? How do you build, I'm just going to arbitrarily say, what have, how do you build like an AI that can predict the stock market? Don't, don't, you will lose money. I like you and, you know, I've only just met you, but I, I want you to keep your money, right? So, but how do you do that? Uh, and then we'll get into at the end of the semester at least a little bit of machine learning. That way, if you choose to go into 422 or into grad school for AI, uh, you are ready for that sort of section of AI. Uh, questions? Yes. What's my favorite sample? What's my favorite sample? I'll go PB and J. Nice little solid PB and J. Other questions? I didn't say you're free to go. This is the question section. You know, I let you think about your questions first. Third favorite color. None of these have anything to do with the course. Questions about the course. Um, you can. You can take both at the same time. It won't, you know, some of the stuff that I cover at the end, you'll have already covered in 422. But, you know, it's not like a, you need to have me first. Oh, when I try to join this map, then there's like a class. Yeah, I will. I'm, I'm waiting for like the dust to settle and then I'll add everybody. Um, so you will have documentation as part of you. So everyone, again, I know I know I have the masses, but again, I said I, I'm trying to answer questions. So when it comes to like when you build out your AI, uh, so in that situation, documentation is going to be part of your your grade. So that's where we're asking you to explain what you did. Um, when it comes time to, you will be building a recommendation engine in this class. You will have to write a little bit, uh, like a, a paragraph explaining the reasoning. But since everyone's decided to just start chatting, I'll go ahead and say I'll see you all on Wednesday. Have a good one. <laughs>